See, you can only love out of strength. It takes strength to love. You got to speak with purpose. We think that our salvation is based on performance. God is not a man that he can lie. He don't lie. You be a vessel that God can work. Because you somebody might need your holy presence to save them when they start off uh, on Sundays, this is Saturday, but uh, with the confession. I've been crucified with Christ, it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, God gave me that years ago to, to uh, recite before we graduated into what I'm teaching now. And it's a, it's a God is our Father. We are His children. <clears throat> and as a Father, He guides us in our spiritual growth. <clears throat> so that was a laying down of a foundation with me not having any idea of where I was going with the revelation that God was uh, enlivening inside of me. And so I thought, you know, I, 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 at the end of this, on um, these notes, you know, we're going to come to a rehearsal of some things I've already given in Los Angeles. Uh, but it's the first time that I'm talking about it here in Chino. So, um, but I needed to go back for you that are here and also for the video to make some, some serious statements of fact about the message, uh, what we believe, and what the reason behind the course is all about. Um, um, I am personally a disciple of Christ. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I will never not be a disciple of Christ. But I'm also open enough, I'm open to be wise enough to accept wisdom when I find wisdom that enhances what we're learning. Um, I want to, uh, you're, you're doing my notes on the, on the TV screen, so I want to go over these notes, I want to go over these scriptures, and as I do so, I hope that you will get the momentum of some past messages and some future messages and why we go in the course that we're, we're, we're going in, the course that we're taking. So the title of today's message is Disciples of Christ. And in John chapter 8, you didn't have to turn your Bible, we got all the scriptures there for you. So in John chapter 8, uh, verse 31, uh, it tells us, it reads, the G Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. So we're talking about abiding and living in the word of God. His word. Now there are other prophets and gurus that have come up with their own word. It's not the word of Christ. It is their own word. It's their own imagination. Uh, our president, Donald Trump, talks about fake news. Well, I can talk about fake gurus. <laughs> or, and the Bible talks about fake Christ. Other Christ will rise up trying to draw your attention to them away from God. But in these scriptures, you're going to find out that Jesus unfolds who he is and who his disciples are and why his disciples are here and why we choose to be disciples of Christ. So in John chapter 13, verse 35, it says, by this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now, this is love. That's, that's, that's the truth of God. The truth of God is love. There is no shadow of turning in this truth. It is love. Our motivation for all that we do is the love of God. That, that pulsates, that flows through each and every one of us. So my motivation for doing anything, it has to be love. Okay? Not my personality, but love. And so if, if love is your motivation, then self is automatically not in the forefront. God's love means that you're thinking of others before you think of yourself. So self doesn't have any room. And, and with love comes a sense of humility, which we talked about on Wednesday. Now, self, selfishness and humility can occupy the same space, just like Light and darkness cannot occupy the same space. If you're going to have an ego or you're going to be selfish, 
Well, humility and ego and selfishness cannot occupy the same place. If you can see your ego puffing up, humility is gone. And God honors those who are humble in heart. Because by being humble in heart, you're tuned in to him. That's your frequency. Now, there are other ministers talking about vibrations and other ministries talking about frequency. Well, in, in, Los, in Los Angeles Christian Faith Center, I think that was the name of our church name, we preach about the same thing, but what God was showing us, in any room, there are all the television stations and their frequency in any and every room. Now we have all radio stations in this room, we have all TV stations in this room, but we need to have a mechanism to tune them in to a frequency to reach that television station. At the same time, we have ABC and CBS in this room. But if we have the right tuner, we can tune in ABC and what that program is all about and tune off NBC, okay? Now, with our uh, developed equipment, not only do we see picture and sound, we see color. And we got a high definition color. We got color that's so crisp, it's absolutely um, fantastic to our eyes to watch this on a television screen, the, 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 the color and the brilliance of the color that's coming for us. Now, that same frequency, you turn off your TV, is still in the room, even though your television's not on and you cannot see it with your visible eye because you don't have the equipment on that will assist you. <clears throat> the Spirit of God is here to assist you in seeing the things of God. You cannot, if, if you don't have the, the assistance of the Holy Spirit, your mind will not be able to comprehend the things of God. You're not on His frequency. Even the, so we talked about operating at a higher frequency, not allowing your body and your sensories to tell you who you are or what you're about or your condition, but allowing the Spirit of God to tune you in to God's mind, to God's brain, and, and see as God sees you, see other people as God sees them. And on that higher elevation, or that higher frequency, or that secret place, whatever you want to call it, that's where we ought to be operating. And that will bring us health. All right? Then one of the things that, the static that comes in our lives is called anxiety. Anxiety on any level is the static that interferes with God's frequency of Peace, love, joy, healing, prosperity. If you, if you are anxious about anything, it shuts you off where you can't hear or see God's plan for your life. So the scripture tells us to be anxious about nothing. That means don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about today. Don't be having no what is. None of that should be on your mind. Because everything you receive from God is a gift. Amen? Amen? We said this on Wednesday. Faith cannot bring you anything grace has not already given you. I want to say that again. Faith cannot bring you anything that grace has not already given you. And see, a lot of times we're trying to have faith for something before we have the assurance that grace has already given it to us. Because all faith does is substantiate what is already ours. It doesn't create something out of the air. It doesn't create the impossible and make it possible. No. Faith substantiates what you already have in Christ Jesus. But grace is by which God has given you all things. So you don't have to believe, I'm scared to believe in God for this, as though you don't have it. And you're not in faith. You're in doubt. Faith says, I have this because grace is already given to me. Amen. And that's what faith says all the time. Now this conversation brings us to why I asked and instructed our congregation to start reading A Course in Miracles, and especially the workbook for time. And that helps you develop your mind to think about God at all during the course of the day. Because in the Course, you make these statements of truth about yourself, where you are and what you're all about. But if you don't discipline yourself to think about God, then you're not disciplining yourself to hear from God. Because you can't hear from Him unless you're thinking about Him. You know, the Scripture says you've got to set your mind 
above what Christ is seated. All right? You got to set your mind on these things. You got to put your mind on these things. Uh, Paul says, think on these things. Think on these things. Those things that are lovely. Those things, that, those things you have to think on. That means you take control of your mind and think on those things. So in the course, it has you reciting a particular affirmation four or five minutes a day, all during the course of the day, so that you put your mind on God. And where your mind is there, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what God wants you to hear. There's no worry. There's no anxiety. There, there's clarity and certainty. Whenever the mind is not clear, it's because it's not connected to the Spirit. When the mind is connected to the Spirit, there is peace and harmony. The only time the mind is troubled is when it's connected to the body, to your senses, to time. Then you start to worry. Then you start to concern yourself about uh, how things are going to go. Am I strong enough for this? Am, am, I, am I good? Going? I'll do my evil. All that stuff is not what God is all about. And that causes you to worry, which causes you to bring all kinds of sickness and disease in your own life. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're, 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 we're saying that, okay, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get to the end in a minute. Okay. <laughs> so in John chapter 15, let's read that. John chapter 15, verse 8 says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So one of the things as God manifested, all of everybody is the child of God, but we are manifested like we should be bearing much. You know, too much in my circle of influence, I see believers bearing very little minuscule fruit. Well, little minuscule fruit will not attract those in darkness to you. The only thing that's going to attract those in darkness to you is to bear fruit. And if you like it or not, that means abundance. Now, if you don't like abundance, then you don't like Jesus, because he said, I come to give you life and to give you that more abundantly. He manifests himself in Peter. He says, and Peter said by the Holy Spirit that you have received all things that pertain to life and godliness. So you have both. You have all things that pertain to life. You have all things that pertain to godliness. So you should live an abundant life. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Verse 14. Now, what are the decisions one has to make to be a disciple of Christ. I'm not talking about having a human experience. Don't sell your shirt out talking about I'm, I'm, this is just a human experience. This is Everybody's having a human experience, but not everybody who's having a human experience is a disciple of Christ. That is delineated and that's purposefully stated. If you're going to be a disciple of Christ, here are the requirements. Or you could just be in life having a human experience, and every once in a while you can be blessed. Every once in a while you can have a breakthrough, but with your breakthrough and with uh, these things that you think are positive comes trouble and heartache, you don't know how to do them, comes behavior that you hide in darkness, hoping that no one will discover it, so there's no true sense of integrity. And it's just saying, well, this is, everybody has these types of experiences. That's not true. Those who have their mind on God, those who are listening to the Spirit of God have learned to put down those voices that would cause them to act contrary to their sonship. Amen? Amen? So your identity is certain. God knows you're his child. Then you have Christ living on the inside of you, sitting right there in the middle of you, comfort in a lounge chair. How in the world can you deny him when he's living in you? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, you know, all this little false, false stuff, you need to throw that out. You need to learn truth when you hear it. Okay. Now, love everybody, because everybody yes. can be deceived. I can be deceived, you can be deceived. But this is why I decided to go back to this so that people understand where I'm coming from. If you're going to if you're gonna decide to listen to me or don't listen to me, at least you should know where I come from. Amen? Yes. Don't Amen. get it confused, and please don't get it twisted. So, in Luke chapter 14, verse 26, it says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. 
Now, Jesus Christ, the people say, Jesus is the Lord. Who's your Lord? Jesus Christ is my Lord. Who's Lord? Jesus Christ is my Lord. You know, okay, this is his requirement. For him to be your Lord, this is his requirement. For you to be his disciple, out of his own mouth, he told you what the requirement was. Mm -hmm. You know, too, and, and see, with, in today's thing, we're too lax. You know, like, we like, like to live a certain way. Anything that, that pleases us, uh, we don't put, apply no discipline to our, our behavior, our lifestyle, and we think we're accepted to God because he just loves us. Because God is just so desperate that he just, he just got to take me any way I, I decide to present myself to him. Well, this is God manifest in the flesh saying how are you going to live the God kind of life. How are you going to live your true identity? If you want to live your true identity, you can allow, you cannot allow the shadows of this world to blind you to who you are. Because Amen. Paul said it this way, we have a form of godliness, but we deny its power. So, you know, so now we're just another opinion in the world like any other opinion. No, we're not any other opinion. We are the light of the world. And everybody knows that light and darkness cannot occupy the same spot. So my thing is, why are we not more enforceful, are, are, are more influential on the lives of other people? And it's the reason, because we don't blend it in so much like the world or yeah. darkness that no one sees our light, and that's our fault. Because we have not been taught how to think. Not, we have not been taught how to be lights. You just, you know, confess in Jesus your Lord and Savior, that's great, but that does not make you the light. Okay. It, does not, it doesn't make you the light. You have to have a light. Jesus showed us who we are and how we are to live. He just didn't give us a philosophy. He lived the life that went with his words. A long time ago, I, I, I loved this song. I was a little boy, I just played a little 33 on the thing, my mama had it, my Hale Jackson. I gotta live the life I sing about. Y'all don't know that song, I'm too young. In my song. <laughs> Y'all too young, Y'all too young for that. But you know, I gotta live the life I sing about. You know, if we're, if we're men and women of God, we have to live the life we talk about. Amen, in our song. So Jesus says here in Luke, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, and wife and children, and that just simply said, you can't put anything before God. Now think about how busy we are. Now all we ask you to do is, is, is take five minutes a day and recite something that says that, that God says about you five minutes a day, but you're too busy that those five minutes gets by you over and over again. So what are you putting before God? What's choking out those five minutes? Amen? So if God was my so think about this, anything that you want to do, you don't need no alarm clock, and you don't need no reminder, because you want to do it. So we don't see the value in identifying with God. Amen? Now, verse uh, 14, now the next verse says, And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now, we've been telling you that you are not a body, you are a spirit. You are not a body, you are a spirit. And then we can say it, and you can intellectually agree with that, but you have to quit letting your body command you on what you do, say, and behave. You have to command the body. You have to take control of that. That's what taking the cross means. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to control my body. My body is not going to control me. Amen. My body is not going to tell me my need. I've set this side for God, and my body is not going to interfere. Not my body or any other body is going to interfere with what I set aside to God. This kind of, the, this kind of discipline strengthens you in your character. And as you get stronger in your character and in your spirit, your spirit will take the forefront of your life and your, and your, and your body will take uh, the back seat, okay? So now people start seeing your life, your light, and not your body, all right? Amen. And, and Luke chapter 14, verse 23 says, uh, 33 says, uh, So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, boy. I mean, you know, church, that's good until you start asking for an offering. You know, you start asking for all people like to give. So that, so that says the idol of money is greater than the love and obedience to God. Think about it. Think about it. If you trust God more than you trust money, giving should not be a problem. 
Amen. If you believe that God is your source, giving is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Giving only becomes a problem when money is your source. And the only person that's going to tell you money is your source is your ego. Thus, it's going to bring all kinds of images of lack and fear mm -hmm. in your mind. All that you got came from God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm sorry for laughing. It's the funniest thing in the world. We 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 get blindsided. So it's not it's not even difficult. Amen. I think some of us been been having money too long that we forgot that God took care of us when we didn't have none. Amen. It, see, this made a lot of sense when we didn't have no money. You're like, we didn't have no money. It made sense because you knew day by day. By day. Uh, there was a miracle. Eating bur virgin every day and, mm -hmm. and, and nothing in the pocket. But as soon as you get something in the pocket, all of a sudden your love for God goes out the window and you start mm -hmm. protecting what's in the pocket. But God took care of you good. Amen. Amen. Well, personally, I've been better taken care of without a job than I ever was with one. Mm -hmm. So, Jesus, as an example of us, showed us how to remove all arguments that will come at the world, from the world toward us. In John chapter 5, verse 36, uh, it reads, But I have a greater witness than John's for the works which the Father has given me to finish. The very works that I do bear witness that the Father has sent me. I love this. Mm -hmm. I love this. I want to read that again. But I have a greater witness than John's. Than John saying, this is the Son of God. The Lamb of God. Savior of the world. He says, I got a better witness than that. So, so just because people give you an accolade, and you refer to, well, Dr. So-and-so said, I am da 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 That's not a good enough witness. Amen. Because just like someone says you are it, there's someone who says you're not. That's right. All right? So he says, I have a better witness than John's, and I know that you know he, he, he carried great influence, but I have one better. The works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me. This is what I'm talking about. This is the difference. This is why we're teaching us to be miracle workers. It's, it, everybody can argue. Everybody can have gurus talk about this and give you all kinds of philosophies. But the laying of hands on the sick, the raising of the dead, is the work nobody can argue with. Amen. Amen. That's what we try to. That's where we. That's where we get it. This is where the Holy Spirit is taking us. Amen. So, so he says here. Uh, where am I? Now? Um, no, no, that's too far. John 10, 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. <laughs> I love it. Jesus says, I told you, and you do not believe. I told you, but you don't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you don't believe. 10, 37 says, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. And this is good. This is putting it on the line. If I'm not doing my Father's work, then don't believe me. All right? Verse 38 says, But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Now there is, a, as I was going over this this morning, God says, Jesus is clearly making a statement that all of us should make. The work that's being done is because the Father is in me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, if you're out there trying to do the work, trying to find enough faith, trying to find enough energy, it's not the Father doing it. It's you, by your own strength. But you should not be strong in yourself, you should be strong in the Lord. Amen. It should be the Lord working through you doing the work. Amen. Then it's just kick back and get the credit. Yeah, but it's yeah. the Lord in you doing the work. And they cannot, they might not like you, they may not believe you, but they can't deny these words. Amen. Amen. They've been saying like everybody else, I don't know. I don't know if he's from God or not. I don't know if she's from God or not. All I know, I was this, and I'm not that no more. I was lame, but now I can walk. Yeah. I had a heart attack. I had cancer. I'm cancer free from the land on their hands. Now, there's a book out called Connection. And I really, 
And it's so it's really popular now. It's in the new age. But there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing new. It's called connection. There's a couple of things out there. The one is called connection, the one is called intention. Alright, so you know, and people are, you know, kinda of like young people kinda of massing around this kind of conversation. And I'll be thinking, that's not because they don't know the Bible. Amen. It was Jesus who talked first about connection. It was Jesus who first talked about oneness. There's a big old movie talking about oneness and God is one and we are one. But I'm just talking about what Jesus has <laughs> been talking about for over two thousand. This is not new. This has always been there. It's just that the church started preaching religion and stopped preaching the word of Christ. Yes. So now it sounds yes. like it's new. It's not yes. new. It's just the church preached religion and not the word of Christ. Right. If they preach the word of Christ, they've been, they would, people would say, no, God has always talked about connection. God has always talked about the intention. God has always talked about oneness. And because we are one with God, then God is in us. And here's another thing that I need to talk about real quick. Men are not gods. They're not gods in the sense of God independent of God. Men are gods because they are connected to God. Because they are one with God. It's not like you are God all by yourself and, and, nobody, and the whole world revolves around you. No, you're connected up to God. Yeah. And because you're connected to God and one with God, the world revolves around God and you're in God. Amen. You're not separate from God. Amen. And you need to quit talking like you're separate from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quit acting like you're separate from God. Like God is not going to do anything. Amen. Amen. You're doing it to yourself because if you want to be God, then you're going to have to live with your own creations. That's right. Okay. All right. Praise God. That brings a whole bunch of confusion. So verse 38, <laughs> or verse 37 again, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. Verse 38, but if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I am in him. Uh, now, 14, 14. Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who, who, who uh, dwells in me does the work. See, there it is. The Father who dwells in me does the work. Father that dwells in you will do the work. If you let him, in John 14 says, Most assuredly I say to you, who, he who believes in me, the works that I do will do also. He will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. So, the same works that Jesus did, we are to do those works. Amen. Amen? So in teaching, you know, now you see under that, concepts towards spiritual maturity. In teaching, I chose to teach these 12 concepts so that we will grow in spiritual maturity. Michael Midrid is the one that I, I do these from, and, but and if he's preaching, I don't care. I don't care where you come from. It's the concept that I believe will help us become spiritual, all right? Because believers, because I looked in the church, these concepts are absent from church behavior. So if, if all church folk, believers, supposed to do miracles so that other people become yeah. believers, then there's a certain attitude we should have, first toward ourselves in our relationship with God, then toward others so that we are open vessels for God to use to perform the miracles. Because remember, he is him that's doing the work. Yeah. So concept number one, which we've been talking about, heaven's oneness versus separation. That's the very first thing you've got to understand. You're not separate. See, see, now, let me show you how, let me break this down to a cosmopolitan uh, thing, um, I'm sorry, micro, uh, microscopic view. When we all come together and we say that God has put us together as a congregation, we're one congregation, not two. Though there are many of us, all right, that's, but we're still one and we have different administrations and different functions, okay? So, it's when we see ourselves separate from the congregation that we become comfortable not being with the congregation when the congregation called a gathering. Because we, we still got that separatism. So, so before we could ever see ourselves one with God that we do not see, we got to grow up and see ourselves one with them we do see. 
And to break it down even smaller than that, even in your marriage. <laughs> even with your children. Your children want to be separate from you. They don't understand that, no, it's one. You're one. See, that's how, now from these little miniature uh, operations, you grow into the large understanding of what being one with God is. Then you understand this. You understand this. As a family, nothing happens to one that doesn't happen to all. Amen. And you know, like, like when you're really one family, nothing happens to Amen. one Impossible. that doesn't happen to all. Amen. Now, that family can really understand nothing happens to me that don't happen to God. Amen. Nothing happens with God that doesn't happen with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all getting it now? See, see, that's how you develop this understanding of what oneness is all about. Yeah. And, and, and uh, separation is an hallucination. You're not separated from God. Mm -hmm. The second concept, with which I thought we would start on the day, but we'll probably do this next week, is forgiveness versus judgment. I said it before, I said it on Wednesday, and I said and I said here. I'm gonna, we're going to be attacking forgiveness from a different uh, views so that we really grasp forgiveness because forgiveness is the key to healing and miracles. Amen. Because you got to first forgive yourself Amen. of yes. what you think you yes. created. All right? You forgive yourself for thinking you're evil. Forgive yourself for thinking that you're separate from God. Forgive yourself for thinking that you're a sinner. Forgive yourself for thinking you frustrated the work of God. Forgive yourself for thinking you wasn't a good parent. Forgive yourself for thinking you wasn't a good student. See, all these, these things, you're one self in Christ Jesus. And so you are not guilty of anything that your mind says that you are. You've been acquitted. Say, I've been acquitted. I've been acquitted. I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. Very good. Amen. Then the next concept is love versus fear. Love versus fear. You'd be surprised how much we do based on fear, rather in the security of God's love. God says, my love has covered a multitude of your faults, so there's really nothing for you to fear. You know, uh, I can't think of the, the great man in history that said this, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, innocence versus guilt and shame. Innocence versus guilt and shame. Number five, God's Holy Spirit versus the ego. Another concept, responsibility versus projection. Number seven, right-mindedness versus wrong-mindedness. Number eight, reality versus illusion. The spirit world versus the natural or material world. Content versus form. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be a good one. Now, all of these alone, by the way, these are, not, these are not short lessons. But content versus form is a real good I, I kind of touched on that already. I'm really going to spend some time with content versus form. The unlimited soul versus the limited body. The unlimited soul versus the unlimited body. And number 12, how it all ends. I've already talked about this, so I'll talk about it again. Holy relationship versus special relationships. Holy relationship versus special relationships. And these are the concepts. I believe that what's going to happen at the end of these concepts, we give you a brief review of all of them, and I'm going to give you a certificate as spiritual practitioner. Same thing is happening on Wednesday's prayer thing. We're going to be practitioners, and we're going to be with those who usher the presence and the glory into our room or into our meeting place, and the people just coming in will be able to experience that high privation, that secret place, that holy of holies, whatever you want to call it, just by entering into what we have created and find themselves as they enter from darkness into the light. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, well, this is going to be bring the, the uh, end of our broadcast. And for those of you viewing us uh, by video, I want to say to you, God has plans for your life, and none of those plans include 